Okay. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, so this is some uh, joint work with uh, two of my students, Sammy Davis and Yao Zhang, and uh, two folks from Microsoft Research, uh, Jonathan and uh, Jack. Okay, so I, I hope I'm going to have a, like a, a peaceful audience, given that everyone had a chance for their cake. So that's usually it's a, it's a good spot. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a, um, a scheduling problem where you have uh, M-identical machines, you have jobs, they have some running time, PJ, and uh, there's a precedence order on the jobs. Uh, so uh, there's like a partial order and... Uh, uh, which tells you that for some jobs, uh, you may need to first finish the first job before you can start the, the second job. Uh, additionally, for this problem, we have uh, communication delays. Uh, so the, we assume there's a uniform number C, that's a communication delay. And uh, he, here's what you need to do. You, uh, you need to find uh, a schedule of your jobs on those M identical machines. Let's say we're starting uh, putting the first job, now you can see that there are three other jobs actually that are dependent on the first job. So let's say after that we want to we'll schedule the second job. If we schedule the second job on the same machine, we, we can start right after job one. But uh, we have this communication delay. So if we decide to schedule uh, a dependent job on a different machine, then a time of at least C needs to pass between completion of the first job and the time that you start the second job. You can, you can imagine that you have, you have jobs that are dependent running on different servers and the data from the first jobs has to go to the dependent jobs and that takes C targets. Yes. Good. So uh, this little example, we can play this through, and uh, this should be the, uh, the optimal schedule. And the objective function is you want to uh, to minimize the name span, which is the time that the last job finishes. Uh, just to make sure we're on the same page, you can see that well, this is job number six, and actually there's some idle time before, but really this was needed because there's this dependent job four that uh, that. That's that we did decide to run on a different machine, so we need to wait C time units between the, the completion of, that, of job four and uh, the time that we start job six. Okay? Is there any question concerning the model? Uh, okay, so what's, what's known? Um, there's a lot more in the literature for this problem when C equals zero, meaning that we do not actually have communication delay. Um, for that case, it's known that uh, there's a very simple two approximation. You just really uh, start the jobs whenever you can, whenever there is an idle machine. And uh, that also turns out to be tight, uh, assuming a uh, variant of the games conjecture. So in some sense, th this problem is actually settled. Uh, however, a lot less is known for the problem where actually you know, C is non-trivial. Um, you could look at that, that same uh, this scheduling at the Graham, and you would kind of analyze what it's actually going to give you for this problem with communication delays. The problem is, uh, let's, let's assume that all the running times are at least one, uh, that actually the other one gives you only basically C approximate. You can imagine C is a lot bigger than, uh, than, than the, the length of the, the jobs. In, in some sense, uh, the idea is that, well, imagine all the jobs have length one and if you need to wait like a giant times c you make a bad decision that may that may cause you a c factor uh there, there actually there have been some there has been some work to just improve the uh improve the constant uh but you can see nothing nothing better than an order c approximation is going good uh so there's a there's a there's a wonderful survey of uh, Schurman and Bürgner on kind of output problems and scheduling. It's usually where I get my open problems from, and uh, this is one of the problems uh, they stated. So to be precise, they asked whether the constant factor approximation, well, not quite get that, but anyway. Um, and actually, if you if you look at some follow up work by Nikhil Bansal, then 
in effect, there wasn't even a good LP relaxation where people conjectured that it would be a good one. So this sort of was a relatively open problem in terms of like how to predict that scale. Uh, maybe one short comment that you might think about a variant where you allow to duplicate jobs. So you're allowed to run a job more than once. So usually it doesn't, that doesn't make any sense in scheduling. But now if you have several jobs that depend on some job J, then actually it might make sense to kind of run the job J several times on several machines so that you actually don't have that complication. Uh, this, this variant turns out to be a lot more tractable and there were some logarithmic approximation, approximation evidence though. Okay, so um, without... Thomas, what is, what, what's with TJ is one in the, uh, in the C equals zero case? Uh, so TJ is the processing time for each job. TJ is the processing time. Uh, yes, actually the, the Swenson result actually plots over. So it's not an issue about the uh, uh, nasty running caps. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is it really C divided by the female? Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes. So this would be if you want to write it up. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we are in very fast. Good. Um, okay. So the um, the main result that I'm going to show here. Uh, which is a paper from last year. This is that there is a there's a log square and approximation for this problem of scaling <laughs> with uh, communication delays. Um, this is this is actually based on uh, on a design of a new strongly approach. Uh, so for for full disclosure, this problem was open for a very long long time, and then at the same conference there was another there was a. a Another paper by a different group of authors, and uh, they also get a polylog rhythmic approximation, um, well, with a higher polylog exponent, but um, for the same problem, uh, they go a very different route in terms of techniques. They don't really work with a, with a linear program. What they do is they, um, they build on these algorithms uh, that allow duplication. And then they show that you can fix a schedule with duplication and get one without duplication, uh, while the length of the schedule only grows by a pulling of factor. So uh, same result, very different routes. So I hope they are not really wasting our time. This is maybe for this already. Uh, Thomas? Yes. Yeah, how do you compare log C and log N? So is it always that C is less than N? Or like, or how, how do we? Well, assume that c is less than boolean uh actually yeah so this uh okay the precise statement is you get a log c log m approximation assuming all the running times are at one uh which can be better than log square and i will only prove the log square and for sake of simplicity yeah i got it. oh and uh n is the number of jobs and n is the number of machines right right Uh, good. Um, so, uh, often scheduling, you can kind of look at the problem you're already trying to solve, and then <laughs> you can quickly figure out there are some ways how you can simplify the problem. Uh, and this is this is the, the slide where I want to make it clear. We actually, uh, I will actually show you an algorithm for a different problem, which is basically kind of a simplification of the original problem. Uh, so we'll make a few assumptions that are sort of without loss of generality after you use a constant factor. Uh, first of all, uh, we will assume that the number of machines that I have available, it's not some fixed number M, it's infinity. That really seems wasteful, but it's not quite. So really, uh, this is already the hard case. Uh, the other thing is, uh, we will assume that all the running times are one. Uh, that you, usually you can do by sort of chopping chopping your lengthy jobs into small pieces of unit length, and um, finally I will assume that instead of requiring that you need to wait C time units uh, between different dependent jobs running on different machines, we're saying the following: we partition the time horizon into intervals of length C, and uh, whenever you schedule 
uh, dependent jobs on different machines, then the second job has to go into a higher interval. And I don't care whether it actually see time units fast or not, just a, a higher interval. Um, good. Uh, so first of all, let me give you a picture how this sort of uh, this variant of the problem looks like. This you can see that this is really more of a clustering problem. So the goal then is to actually uh, cluster the jobs into uh, blocks, into, into clusters of size that goes C. And then you have to arrange the blocks so that whenever there is a, a whenever there is a precedence constraint between a block and, the, and another block, then that, that dependent block has to go later. And you're trying to minimize the number of intervals that, that you're using. Okay. Uh, good. So um, this would uh, how things would uh, look for this little example. And uh, there's a lemma that you can find in the paper that I'm not going to prove here is that indeed, if you it suffices to get an alpha approximation for uh, this sort of simplified problem, and then you get an ooh of alpha approximation for the <coughs> original problem. Uh, it's not a it's not a it's not a hard nor a creative reduction. Basically, uh, what you do is you take the original problem, you chop the jobs into pieces, you run this algorithm, uh, you you get a solution back. Now you you merge all the jobs that have been scheduled on the same machine in the same interval. So imagine you get jobs of length C, and now you just run a list scheduling algorithm, and now. If jobs have length C and you might be losing uh, like a delay of C per job, that's okay. So then you will be losing a constant factor. So I want to focus on uh, on the, the log square approximation I for, for this problem rather than the reaction. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. So we're we kind of back to, to a clustering problem. And uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to um, design a linear program that, that's going to be good enough. And I hope from the introduction you can kind of, you could see that that was not a trivial, trivial step. Uh, there, in some sense, there are two design choices. There's a design choice to make if you design a, like a program. Uh, there are two philosophies. You could uh, usually you just uh, you start with a weak linear program, then you realize it's weak, then you add some inequalities, you see whether you can solve the LP, then you see what your kind of what they give you. Uh, that's not a bad approach, but it's really like a try and error. Uh, and there's a there's a different line of approaching the whole thing. You could also start with a basic LP uh, that that you know is not good. For example, the time index linear program in our case. And then you can throw this into, uh, for example, uh, linear programming lift. So you can uh, uh, apply an LP hierarchy like Shirali Annex to it. That will give you a stronger linear program. And now you can, you can, uh, you can derive more systematically what properties uh, this LP actually has. And uh, the way things went is that actually, we did take the second route. And this is also the way things are being uh, shown in the, in, the, in the paper. But in the for the talk, I will actually just show you the LP, uh, like the simplified LP after you throw all the garbage away that you don't need. Uh, so it will hopefully be easier to digest. But uh, if it looks a little bit like miraculous where this is coming from, it's actually just coming from this. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, let's start with uh, talking about the linear program. This is not quite it, but uh, so this would be the variables that we probably kind of write down uh, when you have half an hour of time. Uh, for every job, you need to decide the index of the interval where you want to schedule the job. Then you need to have some kind of assignment to machines or well, the way we phrase it is that we have decision variables that decide whether you wanted to schedule two jobs uh, in the same interval uh, of the same machine. Okay. And now you write down what you actually, uh, what you can enforce. You know that well, every job can only go together with C other many jobs. And uh, if you have a dependence between job J1 and J2, and they are not scheduled on, on the same machine, then actually there is a, there's a, uh, like the second in index needs to be one bigger than the first index. Okay, good. Uh, so, 
LPs of this form, they were actually wrong in the literature, and uh, something similar like that was also used uh, early approximations. Um, but they're not quite good enough for uh, pulling off factors, and this is sort of the way to, to fix them. And, um, basically, of the complement of your decision variable, um, you have some variable D dependent on jobs J1 and J2, so they're just one minus. Well, do you want to schedule them on the same regime? So in some sense, this gives you, this is the decision variable whether you want to not schedule J1 and J2 on the same machine in the same interval. The important thing is that this is actually a metric. At least for the integral solution, this is a metric. Uh, particularly if the triangle set inequality is satisfied because, well, if you have the job J1 and J3 and they're not on the same machine, then also J1 and J2 are not on the same machine, or J2 and J3 are not on the same machine. So rather trivially, triangle inequality is satisfied. So we can just require this equilibrium. And uh, this is this is the LP that has a pulley lock into that. This is the complement they call it. The very simple metric, which is uh, I'm not not necessarily a cap metric. It's I'm just enforcing uh, trial uh, inequality and symmetry. Uh, uh, of the zero one distances. Well, I would love to have zero one distances, but it's an LP, so I can't enforce that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, Anyway, so well, this indeed is a is a piece of fixation, so let's not, not talk much about that. Uh, okay, but uh, natural question would be, uh, what does it buy you that have a, that you have a metric? Uh, and uh, well, it buys you that there are a lot of nice theorems that you may use without having to prove them. Here's one, and this really is a is, is something that should be in anybody's toolbox. This is a, a well, the CKR clustering, clustering this is to do Kalinescu, Kala, and Rabani. So they say the following, you, uh, you have a semi metric space, meaning that, well, you have some elements and you have a metric on it. And uh, you have some parameter delta. Uh, and now you can, uh, you can generate a partition, a random partition of your space, so that you have a few nice properties satisfied. First of all, the, the blocks you're generating, they have a diameter of most delta. Uh, and the other thing is that, well, if you, uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at two elements, J1 and J2, then the probability, you have a, an upper bound of the probability that you're separating these two elements, J1 and J2. And that upper bound, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of proportional to the distance divided by this parameter delta. Well, times a log, log n, log n term. It's sort of, you have to lose because you can't do that. Okay. Uh, so the intuition is that, well, if you have, if you have two elements that, that are very, very close to each other, they're actually very unlikely to be separate. Okay. In fact, if you, if you look at the, uh, the argument more carefully, then uh, you, can, you can also see that this isn't just a thing about uh, pairs of elements. This really holds for, any, for any, uh, any set U of elements that the probability that uh, the set is separated, meaning that uh, some elements end up in different blocks. This is actually upper bounded by log n times the diameter of the set divided by delta. Who is that? N? What is that? N is the number of elements in your set. Good. Any questions? Oh, this is you fix you in the beginning before this. Uh, well, you, that's a, it's, a, it's a very fine question. You do not have to tell this, uh, you do not have to tell you to the algorithm. So the algorithm uh, is oblivious. Yes, yes. That's, that's it is, in fact, important. So. Uh, yes. Okay, good. Um, Okay, just because the algorithm is so, so simple, here's, here's the clustering of CKR. Uh, well, the two sources of, of, of randomness, you, you pick a random ordering of the elements in your semi-metric space, and you pick uh, a uniform random parameter beta between a quarter and a half, and now you just go through the, the elements in the order that you picked. <coughs> Sorry. 
and you sign everything that's within V that times delta rates. Uh, okay. And uh, okay, and that 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 is the, the clustering that satisfies the guarantee. Extremely simple. And the uh, the analysis is it's, it's half a page, but I'm going to skip it for the reason of time constraints. This, but, uh, Thomas, this reminds me a lot of Barthold's three construction. Yes, yes, yes. You could. It's, I guess it's a lot the same. Yes. Yeah, it looks very good. I will probably see Kira came earlier. But how can we? It's just like one scale. Yeah, yeah. You need to be careful with the, with this, this. You have different scales in. Okay, good. So now let's come to our uh, scheduling uh, scheduling problem. So let's uh, let's reason a little bit about what, what we know about the LP solution. Um, so first of all, there's some good news. If you if you have dependent jobs J1 and J2, then indeed, um, so the LP is going to guarantee you that. Well, the LP claims that it's scheduling J1 before J2. Uh, but you may not have a lot of gaps, so they may be always uh, Okay, so uh, here's the thing that actually we want to prove. This is sort of the main technical uh, argument to do. Uh, if you look at the time window of a one over log n fraction of an interval, and to look at all the jobs that J star that the LP claims to be scheduling at this time, uh, then what we're doing is we will be able to, to schedule those jobs in log M in intervals. Okay. Again, LP has the LP claims that I have these jobs J, J star and I'm only scheduling them in the one of a log M fraction of one interval. And we will use log m in intervals, but the blob is only log squared. So if we can prove this, this is where our log square and upper log comes. Okay. And uh, if you have done approximation algorithms for scheduling with precedence constraints, this is sort of how things always look like. Is the P says, well, I like scheduling is sort of approximately at the same time. Now you have to do the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. This is going to be the main, uh, main need. Uh, okay, so let's do some more reasoning. What we actually, what non trivial facts we can say about the LP solution. Um, good. So let's, uh, let's look at two of these jobs, J, J1 and J2 in J star. So these are two jobs that the LP claims to be scheduling very close to each other, and they're dependent. Uh, then, in fact, the distance. The distance metric, the, 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 the D value is, is very small as well. It's one of the log. Uh, there's not much to prove, it just basically you look at the LP, uh, the LP, and you realize here that well, I, I have this constraint, and I know that uh, the C index, this is very close to each other. So then this one it has to be very small. Really nothing to prove. Uh, okay. Thomas? Yes. Can you remind me? Some, is there some normalization to the metric that, like, helps think of things of size one as like the length of an interval? Uh, well, okay. Yeah, yes, uh, in some sense. Uh, now we're counting intervals. We're not necessarily counting time. So an interval had originally length like C time units. But that's now one interval. Okay. So the one over log n this means that it's a one over log n fraction of an interval. But so should it be one over log n of, of little c or times little c or in time, yes. Yes. Uh, okay, so the metric is timeless, and is what you're saying. But but distance one in the metric kind of is one the interval. The limit of, of the metric is the number of intervals. Gotcha. 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 Thank you. Thank you for using three of my five minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So here's a non-trivial uh, non-trivial lemma. Uh, 
Okay, so if you look at any job J1 and you look at all, you look at all the jobs that are close, say the distance is at most a half, then actually there are not too many of those, they're at most 2C. Uh, the reason is that, well, we have this LP constraint, and whatever the distance is at most a half, this quantity is at least a So kind of like Markov, they're not more than 2C of those. Okay, good. Uh, so, um, but um, here's a here's a sort of like a sub lemma, like a sub claim. Uh, we have this uh, these jobs J star um, of jobs that that the LP schedules very closely together, and the claim is that actually we can schedule half of these jobs within one interval of length two c. Okay, and this is sort of a, it's half in a, like a non-discriminatory way that every job has a has a probability low bounded by a half to the scale. And this, you just, we just repeat long and many times and that, that'll, uh, that'll leave the scale. Okay. Uh, and, and, okay, so this is the one crucial, this is the one slide where actually there's some ideas in here. So this is, uh, this is how do you actually schedule the signal batch? Uh, okay, so how do we manage to schedule half the jobs? Uh, good, so here's the algorithm. We, we first run the CKR clustering uh, with a diameter bound of, let's say, water. And uh, these are all clusters. Okay, diameter is bound, and that's fine. Uh, you can see that actually some jobs actually may actually have a dependence. So it's not that we can schedule the blocks in parallel, but we can sort of rescue the situation. We can just simply take all the jobs in, uh, let's say, the L block, that are not separated from any ancestor, ancestor in, in JSTAR. Uh, this is the dark gray. Okay, these we can schedule. The only thing that's not clear is that these are half the jobs, but they are. And that's I hope the last thing that I can prove. Okay. Good. Uh, okay, so this is sort of by construction uh, that by my schedule indeed is, uh, is feasible. Uh, well, I'm not scheduling too many jobs in one interval, only 2C, and this is because, uh, well, of the diameter bound, and I, I just argued that sort of the clusters of bounded diameter have bounded size. Uh, this is also fine. So, uh, good. So this will be awesome. Okay. Uh, good. So here's, here's the main part of the, the, the analysis that you fix a job, J, and you want to, we want to prove that actually this job is going to be scheduled in, in the batch with probability. Uh, so let's look at the job. And uh, so what is actually, let's look at the ancestors that the job has uh, in J star. And what is the probability that J is not separated from any of the matches? Uh, well, the, the key observation is that the diameter in the matrix that we have defined is very small of this set U. Uh, this was one of the lemmas that, that we had earlier that actually uh, the, the distance between dependent jobs is very small if they, are, if they all are in J star. So the diameter of, of this set U is small. And now just CKR guarantees you that actually very unlikely uh, that you're separating a small diameter set. And uh, that's it. Okay, any question? Uh, okay, uh, but so, okay, so this is sort of the whole algorithm. You really just, uh, you solve the LP, you, um, you chop the, the time horizon into, into fractions of one over log n, uh, and then you just, uh, for log n iterations, you do this, that you, you run the CKR clustering and you schedule everything there. Uh, and I'll, uh, sorry. And I'm gonna conclude with well, the open problem. So the open problem from the working uh, uh, in our Schurman paper, we did not exactly solve the actual constant factor approximation, which maybe was greedy, but uh, anyway, so we got, a, we, we got a log square approximation, Concept factor may be difficult. Maybe you can say for one of the log factors. Maybe that's uh, that would be sorry. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot for your patience and uh, thank you very much.